Professional portrait photographers know that some tricks and skills are needed in their back pocket to make images stand out from the crowd. This could be the style of lighting or the environment of the portrait location, but it could also be the treatment to the image after the shutter has been clicked. And one brilliant way to breathe new life into the frame is to apply a black and white makeover. Not just any makeover, however, a filmic, hard contrast, edgy mono conversion. And to do this, one of the best softwares to use is Affinity Photo 2. This is because the approach we're going to take with this technique is non-destructive. So if you wish to start over, you won't irreparably damage your file. By introducing additional elements such as a vignette to the border of the frame, you are directing a viewer's attention towards the subject, the ultimate aim of any pro portrait photographer. So let's get started. With your image open in Affinity Photo 2, make sure you're in the photo persona. If not, simply head up to the top left of the interface and click on the photo persona icon. Our first job is to head to the layers panel and click on the adjustments icon. And this is identified by a half black, half white circle. Click on it and a load of different options will appear on the drop down menu. But the one we want is black and white. A dialog box will appear with a number of color sliders and you can take your time working through the sliders and adjusting each one to change the tonal levels of each individual color and how that affects the black and white adjustment. So I think this works quite nicely for my image. So obviously this will be specific to your image, so you might want to take extra time playing with the sliders, seeing how they affect the black and white conversion. Head back to the layers panel and select the adjustments icon for the second time. This time though, when the drop down menu appears, we're going to select brightness and contrast. A new dialog box will open and has two sliders, brightness and contrast. Drag both towards the right, but don't overdo this too much. Increasing the sliders too much will compromise image quality. Again, this will be specific to your image. Now, the addition of a brightness and contrast adjustment layer can muddy some important details on your subject, like the eyes and the mouth. So we need to rectify this. Head to the layers panel and click on the mask option, which is identified by a circle within a square icon. Now, what we need to do now is make sure the mask is paired with the brightness and contrast adjustment. So we're going to hold and drag it with our mouse and just hover it over the brightness and contrast layer until it pairs. And you'll see by clicking on the drop down option, it's paired nicely with our brightness and contrast adjustment. With the mask selected, we can now head over to the left hand side of the interface and click on the paintbrush tool option. You can change the size of the brush using the square bracket keys. Make sure the brush is set to black and it has a hardness of 0%. You can then start to paint out the pixels from the brightness and contrast layer, typically over the eyes and also the hands are too overexposed here. So I'm just going to add some detail back in here by brushing out the pixels from the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Head back to the layers panel for a third time and select the adjustments option once more. This time we're going to select curves. A dialog box will appear with a histogram and we need to draw out a rough S shape. So click and hold the mouse and drag and then at your second point, click, hold and drag. Now, if this effect is too heavy, instead of using a mask, we can head to the opacity option and drag the opacity bar further down. This will lower the strength of this curved adjustment. So around 80% works well for my image. Now, adding a border will focus attention on the subject. So head back to the layers panel and for the last time, we're going to go back to that adjustments icon. This time, we're going to select HSL. A new dialog box will appear with three sliders, hue, saturation and luminosity. Drag the luminosity slider all the way to the left and this will leave the frame in complete darkness, completely black. So what we're going to do is add a mask, so head back to the layers panel, click on the mask layer, make sure it's paired with the HSL adjustment layer, make sure it's selected, and with your paintbrush ready, start to paint out from the center all the way until all that's left is the corners in darkness. 
If that's still a bit too heavy for your liking, again, you can hit the opacity bar, and drag the slider to the left, just so it's a bit more subtle. Our final step is to add some sharpening to the frame. For this, we need to click back onto the background image. Head up to Filters, down to Sharpen, across to Unsharp Mask. Again, this will be dependent on your image, but a radius of 0.3px works well for me. Click Apply and your image will sharpen up. Okay, let's take a look at how this technique has changed our image. This was our start image. Here's the black and white adjustment, the brightness and contrast tweak, the curves adjustment, and adding the vignette. Quite a dramatic transformation that will make your portrait image stand out from the crowd. There we go. Have fun with your hard-edged mono conversions, and I'll see you next time.